why do we want to do Python, right? And the answer is that um, Python is a kind of it's a modern it's a modern language, right? Uh, and so, um, what do I mean by that? So, if you look at the history of programming, uh, I'm just going to make some comments. I, I don't have particularly slides I wanted to focus on. Uh, if you look at the history of programming, uh, we started off by writing programs in what is called machine code, which was completely unreadable, right, for humans. I mean, it's a very precise language, but it's very difficult to write code in this language. So immediately afterwards, we started to dis invent computer languages that we could then translate code. For example, if you wrote code in Fortran, you would write a program that would translate your Fortran code into machine code that you could run on the computer. Right, and this led to a slew of different languages. Right, Fortran, COBOL, uh, C, Pascal, uh, a whole generation of programming languages. I don't have time in this talk to give you a full history of programming. Uh, if you guys are interested, let me know. We could try to create a session just to talk about all the different languages and the pros and cons of various languages. But for now, let me just zero into Python. Right, so Python is a modern object-oriented programming language. We'll, I'll explain what objects are later. Uh, but the most important aspects of Python that I want to stress for you guys today is that one is it has been designed to make the language very easy for us to read. It may be one of the programming languages that is very close to English, right? It doesn't use too many semicolons. It doesn't use too many braces. Um, it uses white space in a very intelligent way to make our programs extremely readable. So that's point number one. I think the readability of Python, especially for new programmers. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was working with a couple of uh, uh, high school uh, children and they were very pleased with Python. They said, oh, this is so much better than Java for us. That's not necessarily a very insightful comment, but for those of you who know other languages, I would encourage you to make the comparisons and we can talk about it more. So you will find it's a very easy language to work with. The second important, important, important aspect of Python is that it's a programming language in which you can build your programs incrementally, by which I mean step by step. And we're going to use that feature a lot uh, uh, as we work with Python. You don't have to write the program, compile it, and then run it. It's not a three-stage process. As you write each line, you can the Python uh, system will build the program for you as you go along. And this is not only good for learning, but it's tremendously useful when you do data science. Because in data science, you load up a bunch of data into your computer and you continuously ask questions to this data. Then you try to get insights from the data. And that's an incremental process. And very often in data science, you're not even sure what is the right question or what is the right model to use. So again, Python being an incrementally compiled, interpreted language is a wonderful asset. Again, it may be a little bit technical, but I know some of the people on the course have a bit of a programming background. So this may be interesting for you to keep in your mind. Okay, so those are the some of the main reasons I would say that Python itself is interesting. Of course, the last reason uh, is practical, right? I think the data science, robotics, AI communities, for the reasons that I just mentioned, have started using Python a lot more. And the adoption of Python has been significant. Initially, even four years or five years ago, if you wanted to do data science, you probably use a language like R because a lot of the libraries and algorithms were coded in a special, specific language that was tuned to data science. Uh, but over the last five years, we have ported a lot of the information over and uh, this information that we have ported over into Python makes Python a very, very valid and viable candidate for data science. So for those of you who want to do data science, Python becomes a wonderful way for you to uh, launch your data science careers. So uh, for all these reasons, I think Python is uh, a great place to start. Okay, so let's just do something now. So I wanna introduce you to a, a tool that we've used to make, uh, uh, to give you access to uh, uh, a programming environment. Um, and we can start with something extremely basic, right? So uh, I'm going to show you how to use Python as a calculator. Um, and you can see here, we've used this tool called Trinket. 
And if you if you click, uh, so what did I do? I I hope you guys are all on the same page with me. If there's any reason you have difficulty finding this page, please chat and uh, Manish will point out any links that you need. Um, but the important thing is we have here embedded a nice little program that actually runs pro Python for you inside your browser, right? So you don't have to install Python because we have a short course and I didn't want, and everyone has different kinds of computers, etc. We thought we'd give you this experience of running Python inside the browser. Right. So uh, from from this session, as we go forward, much of my conversation will be centered around a piece of code that we can actually have on the screen and you all of you can manipulate. it. Yeah. So today, I, I think the, let me just give you some 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 small tips about how to use this tool to run any program. There's an arrow like a play arrow. Uh, if you hit this arrow, you get uh, the output on the right. Yeah. So that's as simple. That's all you need to know how to run a Python program. Okay. And now some quick tips about what we do here. So the first line is a, what is called a Python comment, right? So you, the important ingredient here is the hash symbol, right? Which is in the front. Uh, the hash symbol tells Python, please ignore this. That gives you the freedom to write anything you want and Python will simply not process that line. Now, as I said before, we use uh, code to communicate to ourselves and to communicate to each other. So these comments can be helpful. Like for example, this comment tells you that the line below actually implements additional right? So uh, quickly, let me just talk about the uh, different uh, mathematical operations in Python. Actually, they're on the screen here, so hopefully all of you can see it. Can I ask a quick question in terms of, is this visible? Do you need to make it any bigger? Is the font small? Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, we can see it. It's okay. pretty clear. Uh, okay, so if it's clear, then let me proceed. So addition in Python is, oh, so, so first let me start with this strange print thing. So this print uh, that you see in uh, kind of a pink purple color um, is, a, is a Python function, right? And all Python functions uh, have parentheses or brackets, right? Uh, and inside these brackets, you put some information that you want Python to process. So in particular, now we're talking about the print function. We'll spend a whole session talking about functions and creating our own functions. Here, we are going to use a function that has already been created for us. And what this function does is, whatever you put inside this function will get printed out for us, right? So for example, uh, I have print 23 plus 27, which is 50, and it's just going to print it out. So immediately, I would ask all of you who have access to this, please go in and change these numbers and make sure, uh, put in a number that you can check and make sure Python can actually add properly. Now, uh, subtraction also is fairly straightforward, right? It's the same symbol that we're familiar with, but now I want to highlight two different operations for you, right? Multiplication does not use the familiar, it does not use the X, right? Uh, it actually uses the star. So multiplication is a star and division, since there's no division symbol on many, uh, keyboards division uses the slash, right? The, the, the slash that you see on the screen. Um, so again, I encourage you guys to try out those operations. And the last one is very interesting, right? So uh, I will just say it now. We'll come back to exponents again, but for now, just think about it as a clever way, a short way to write, you know, for example, I've written here, if I want to write two times, two times, two, five times, right? I want to multiply two with two five times, then I write two to the power of five or two to the power of five in Python will be two with two stars. Okay. So that's the exponent. Um, so hopefully you guys are able to access this and run it. If you have any problems, uh, hopefully, I mean, you're, you're asking Manish. Uh, I think John, can you just take a, moment break and then uh, just pause it for a second and just show them where to find this uh, interactive calculator. Oh, sure. So you go to the course page. Course. Yeah. yeah. Are you, if you're on the website, click on the course link. So you're inside the course link and now you should see session one. This is what we're working on today. Uh, so right now I'm on session 1.3, right? And se section 1.3 in session one, it says Python as a calculator, right? So if you click on this, and this is where I said it takes a second to load up. If you click on this, 
you see a bunch of tabs, right? Uh, which look like notebooks. So uh, there's a little bit of text in the first tab and uh, in the second tab. So wherever I've included these things, I call them explorations. So you should see this second tab here. Sorry, I'm scrolling up and down. Uh, and in this tab is the interactive uh, component. Uh, did that, did that help? Um, are there still, I can go into chat for a second. Are there still people who have uh, trouble accessing this? If there's anyone, uh, just let us know. Let us know because immediately when I, when I switch to the next, uh, uh, next session, we are going to, we're going to actually do something with this. Okay. So I think right away in the next section, uh, you guys are going to see that what is important for us in this, in this course is that we are really trying to make you, you use these tools to structure your thinking, right? So if you go here and oops, uh, if you go here to the next tab, we're going to do a quick exercise. Okay. And uh, the exercise is the following. Uh, suppose you made, as I said in the comments here, uh, suppose you made a billion dollars by uh, writing a wonderful app and you sold it and you got a billion dollars, right? I'm going to ask you this question. Um, how long will it take for you to spend a billion dollars? Okay. Now, the reason for asking this question is mildly amusing. Hopefully it's interesting. Uh, you can convert it into rupees if you want, make it a bigger number or keep it as a billion rupees. Uh, but the real reason for asking this question is to show you that when we ask a question like this, of course you can guess and you should guess because I want you to uh, develop your intuition for these kind of uh, answering these kind of questions. But can we actually calculate something, right? So as I said to you guys, the conceptual part is most important to me. Uh, we want to do some kind of calculation, right? To, to actually figure out uh, how long will it take for me to spend a billion dollars? So if you go in here, you have the tools now. So um, how would you write a billion? So since I introduced you uh, with this uh, with this idea of exponents, I'm going to actually show you how uh, how to use exponents. But before I get into exponents, one of the things we will do is we will take all these numbers and save them in variables, right? And what variables will do is it will allow us to save numbers in, uh, to use a label to denote a number, right? And it's a fairly simple idea and many of you might have used it before, right? So here I can call it amount to spend and that's a billion dollars. So how do we write a billion? A uh, billion has uh, nine zeros or it's, uh, so I would just write it like this, right? And just to make sure I got the right, uh, um, I got the right amount here. I can print it out. Now, one of the nice things with, with this, with this tool is it knows as soon as you created a variable, it knows that the variable exists and it prompts you. So you can actually just click on it and it will select the variable for you. Right. And if I run it, uh, of course I can see a billion printed out. Uh, later we'll see how to put in the commas and so on to make it easier to read, etc. Ah, to run it, you just hit the arrow on top, right? Um, so you see here, there's an arrow next to the uh, trinket symbol. So if you, if you hit this arrow, it will run your program. So I want you guys to make sure you can actually run this little piece of code and then we'll build up something interesting. Um, as you are working on running it, let me just make an important comment. You see, I gave the variable a name, right? And you're going to learn that choosing good names is not an easy skill. Right, and it's a skill that we want to continuously develop and 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 refine. Um, use names. It's okay if they're a little long initially, right? Because it's better than writing. For example, if I took this out and I just called it like you know I don't know a, a t s, and that means amount to spend. It can be a little confusing when I come back later or if somebody else is reading it. Uh, what exactly does this variable stand for? Right. So that's the first important thing. Use uh, use expressive, expressive, expressive uh, uh, variable names. Um, and the second thing is, when we start to be expressive, you're really putting multiple words into the variable name. And when you have multiple words, you have to choose a strategy. How do I, 
put the words together, right? And in Python, uh, the strategy is to separate words by an underscore, right? Um, and this has an interesting name. This is a, a convention that we use. And this convention is called snake case. I guess if you can imagine, it's like, a, like the bumps that we draw when we sketch a snake, right? Uh, with the underscore being a part of the bump. Uh, just to contrast this, there is another style that is used in some other languages where you would write something like this. So in this case, you use, you use capital letters. So the first letter is always lowercase, but you use capital letters to demarcate the end of words. And this is called camel case. And I guess the idea is that the capital letters represent the humps of a camel, if you imagine it that way, right? So I just, I do this to tell you that this is about structuring our thoughts and choosing the way we, we, how we express ourselves, even in naming a variable and choosing what style shall we use to write it, right? So the most important thing is, it's not that one style is better or worse. We must pick a style and stick to it so that it's easy for people to follow you. And the Python community has been always using the snake case style. I myself used to use languages like C sharp and so on, where the camel case is used. So I may make a mistake here and there, uh, but as I write Python code, you know, now I make sure that I write in snake case. So I just want to, so just to quickly recap, uh, variables are things which will hold values that you put into them. They point at these values. And then when you use the variable, it represents the same. For example, wherever I put amount to spend, it's going to be a billion dollars. So it's equivalent to writing 10 star star nine everywhere, but it just makes it more meaningful to us. Point number one. Point number two, uh, use expressive variable names. Point number three, there's a convention here, which is the snake case convention. So perhaps you can use it. Um, so I, 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 could write, I could write some code to solve the question that we started off with. And the code is now, how long will it take for us to spend a billion dollars? So. What do you think? Does it, does anybody know the answer? Does anybody want to propose a way to solve this problem? Uh, you can put it in chat. Okay. Uh, but I will, I will start. So I think the first thing to do here is to say, well, if you're asking me how long will it take for me to spend this money? Can I just write a check for a billion dollars and buy a huge, buy a huge building and I'm done. Right? So I really want us to understand what a billion feels like. So I'm going to set this up slightly differently. Right? So I'm going to say you spend money at some rate and I'm going to use a fairly simple rate, right? You spend a dollar every second, right? So if you spend a dollar every second, what does that look like? So let's, let's create a variable uh, uh, here. Number of seconds in, uh, let's start with an hour first, right? So number of seconds in an hour would be, and now you see the, uh, pleasure of having a nice little calculator in line is that you can do the computation right there and you can print it out. So let's make sure we can print this out and see, uh, and see what happens. So I also want you to get the experience of this flavor that as I'm thinking about something, I type a little piece of code, I run it and I get feedback from the computer, right? So rather than carrying all this, uh, numbers and variables in my head, it's now in the code in front of me, right? So, there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Many of you knew this, so nothing very powerful here. But now let's ask how many seconds do I have in a day, right? Uh, number of seconds in a day. And that's all I have to do is use the previous one. So I can, so see now you see the editors make long variable names easy for us. You don't have to type so much. And all I have to do is just multiply this by 24, right? And of course, again, I can print this out if I want to see, uh, let's print this out anyway. So let's see what we get. Oops. Okay. So this is beautiful. I made a mistake. Uh, I didn't really orchestrate it, but, uh, the mistake is something that all of us are going to do, right? The important thing is not to panic when a mistake happens, right? The important thing is to stay calm. <laughs> And look at what it's telling us, right? And it's saying num seconds in a day not defined, right? So I have made some mistake here. And of course, num seconds in a day, I should have said num seconds in an hour. And Python has actually uh, 
figured it out for us, right? So really this should have been something else. So uh, let me just go, go back and show you where it happened. So when I, when I chose here, I should have chose the second option. And in a moment, I chose the wrong one. So now I fixed it. And of course, you can see it's highlighted here. The print also, I made a typo, right? So if I fix these two errors, hopefully my program will run. But if not, we'll just calmly find what the problem is. So again, a big life skill, right? Let's not panic when there's a problem. Let's just look at it and get used to reading error messages. Uh, hopefully, that seemed like a nice demo of what to do with errors, but uh, hopefully you will be able to solve it. Now, the important thing is when you're working with someone who knows programming, they'll find these errors quickly and fix them. You should continuously develop the skill to find what the problem is and fix it. Okay. So now I got an interesting number, 86,400. So that's the amount of money in dollars that I can spend every day. And I wish I had that kind of money. Oh, somebody's got the answer already. So Kamal, I think I see you on chat. You've got a number that looked great. Um, I wish we, uh, we could discuss this uh, over, uh, over voice. Uh, maybe we'll do this uh, later. Um, so please follow along the discussion, okay? And uh, if I, I'm, at the end of it, if you have a different way of calculating this, uh, then maybe you should uh, unmute your microphone and we can talk about it. Um, so what do I do next? So I know that I will spend about $86,000 in a day. All I need to do is to convert this now. I can do how much, you know, how many seconds are there in a year? Okay, and that's also easy, right? Because I can just take this, uh, what I did, number of seconds in, in a day, and just multiply it by 365, right? And again, we can print this out. Uh, for all those of you who know the uh, who know the answer, please do take a minute to type it out for yourself. Right, uh, a little bit of fluency and Python and typing uh, will get built if you know how to do the computation. Right. So, uh, okay. So we got we got an interesting number. That's the amount of money that it's about th thirty one million uh, that you could spend. Uh, okay. Yeah, somebody else has got the answers. The answers start trickling in now. So I know how much I can spend in a year. I'm almost at the answer. Right. So number of years, uh, let me keep my variable name short so I can finish off this, is basically I take the billion. So I take the amount to spend and I divide it by uh, the number of, uh, the amount of money that I can spend in a year, right? And just print it out and we are home. Okay, so let's see what we get. Yeah, so there's a number, 31.7, right? Uh, so, okay, so let's just pause for a second and see. Uh, somebody asked about putting space after every question. Uh, where's the, I'm not, oh, the space is not required here. So I could take out these spaces. It's just a question of whether it's easier to read. That's it. Yeah, and it's, a, it's going to be your personal style at some point. Uh, I thought that these two little blocks of code uh, went together, right? I could have also had a style where I always put a space that would take up too much room, right? So again, it's a style thing. There's no Python rule here that requires it. Uh, good question though, please um, please uh, ask. And uh, Kamal, thank you for jumping in. Thank you for jumping in with a, with a, with a, with an answer too. That would be wonderful if you guys can help each other. Okay. Yeah, that, that's great. That, that's the difference about our platform that you can help each other. Yeah. Yes. Please do. Please do. Please ask and please answer. I don't need to be, I never think of myself as the one with all the answers and you should, you should please jump in with your questions and, and, and help each other. Right. So wonderful. So, but I want to summarize this quickly for you. Right. So the important thing here is that we can ask an interesting question. We can convert it into a bunch of steps, small steps. Uh, we can interact with the computer and make it do the heavy uh, calculations. In this case, the calculations are easy. You could almost do it on a piece of paper. Um, but the most important aspect, and of course we learned about variables and we learned about using the print command in Python. Uh, of course, you got exposed to a new Python programming tool as well. Um, so I think it's just so many little pieces of experience that we get from doing something like this. So, 
I don't want you to just learn the commands for multiplication, divide, add, and subtract. This is what a typical Python course will do. This discussion will stop here, right? You learn the symbols and the operators and you're done. What I want you to do is to learn the, the, the harder skill of asking important, interesting questions and solving them. So for example, the next question I asked is, uh, how long would it take for you to walk across the US? As soon as I have a calculator and I have this way of thinking, I can start trying to answer this question, right? Uh, and for those of you who are in India, for example, you can replace this with India, right? Um, I, Manish, I want to do a quick time check. Uh, um, we still got uh, 10 minutes left, so we can quickly go through this problem or, okay. or um, yeah, we can take five minutes for this uh, problem and last five minutes for questions, I guess. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so let me, uh, I'm sorry if I'm rushing you a little bit through this question. Uh, we, we can come back to this next time. We can talk about it in the office hours, etc. But I want to go through this quickly with you. Okay. So, so what is the important idea? So this question, how long will it take for me to walk across the US? It's an amusing question. And actually, if you go on the website, I've given you a link and there's a list of people who have walked across the US. It's a very interesting link. If you are interested, you can, you can look at it. Um, of course, we must always guess. So you guys can guess the answer if you, if you have a guess. Uh, but then we must work through it, right? And the first ingredient that we need here is we need to know how wide is the US, right? And again, we, we're trying to do all this by, by thinking about the problem and coming up with ways to find out the answer, right? Uh, of course, you can Google. And maybe you should Google either before or after. For me, the answer is not important. Reasoning about the answer is important, right? So one way that I came up with to figure this out was I actually have flown uh, from the East Coast, which is like New York, to, uh, to Seattle, which is on the West Coast. And it was roughly uh, a six-hour flight, right? And an airplane travels at about 500 miles an hour, right? So I, I'm going to just work with this. I left some stub code for you guys to play with so you don't have to type a lot. Can I just highlight to you that in some cases where I want you to do a computation, I might have put in a zero because otherwise Python will complain if I leave it blank, right? So now we must uh, calculate the width of the US, right? And I'm giving you even a hint, right? So you just take the time and multiply it by the speed, right? So, um, so if I multiply these two quantities and if I run it, uh, you get an answer, right? It's 3000 miles. So it's, Again, this is not the exact answer, but it's a good enough answer. It's in the ballpark, right? So you should, of course, eventually look up the answers. And different to some other experiences that you might have had, I do not want to stress. The, it's wonderful if you remember this number 3000 or whatever the exact number is. But it's more important that you have three different ways of calculating it, right? So I gave you one way of calculating it. You can try to think about other ways to figure this out. Right. Um, so please give that some thought. Uh, but now we got the width of the US, but it's in miles. And when I'm going to be walking or trying to figure out how long it takes me to walk across the US, I'm usually going to think in terms of feet. Right. So it would be better to have this number in feet. So this is another very, 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 very important idea, which is really a physics idea, maybe, which is whenever you measure a quantity, the units are important. Right. And especially when you want to solve problems, units become really important. So in this case, we would like to convert it into feet. Then in order to convert it into feet, you have to multiply. And the conversion factor is a number. Uh, I've actually given you the number, but I will just use a round number for now. If you will, uh, 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 just 5,000 could be fine too, right? So I'll take the width of US and just multiply it by the conversion factor. So this will give me a number in feet. So maybe I multiply it by 5,000, right? And if you print it out, uh, you'll get the width of the US in feet. Oops. Okay. So I got the width of the US. Just take the first line. You'll see why, uh, you know, I have to do more calculations for the others. Okay. So, so we now know this, I have to walk and an important thing I will tell you, and I'll repeat it a few times till it becomes second nature to you. Whenever we see large numbers, we can register the number, but we should always convert it into things that are interesting, right? So in this case, this large number, which is the width of the US in feet, will become interesting to us when we convert it into how many days it will take us to walk this distance, 
right? So let's see how do we do that. So the other side of we start at the other side and say, okay, how large is my step? Uh, take a reasonable step, uh, and and you know maybe you want to measure it, and it's an important piece of personal data that you want to have. I pick the number two point five. Right. For some of you, it could be two, it could be three. You can adjust this. That's the other beautiful thing about these calculations is that when you use these variables and you store values in variables, you can do a whole calculation and you can come back and say, well, if I'm very short and I only have one and a half feet in a step that I take, then you can just change it to one and a half and see what happens to the answer. Right. So I encourage you guys to uh, modify this. Um, so what do, if, if each step is two and a half feet, how many steps do I need to cross the US? Well, I take the width of the US and divide it by the size of each step, right? And that will give me uh, the number of steps I need to cross the US, right? So if I, if I, div if I divide and run it, oops. Okay, so it looks like I have a, do I have an error here? Uh, uh, uh. Width of USA in feet divided by size of. Uh, where is the size of USA? I think you have uh, width of USA divided by size of steps. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to just do something simple here. I'm going to just turn off all the other prints. Uh, so you guys are getting to see a, a live debugging session. So let's see if we can figure this out. So that's 3000. That's 6000. Uh, I still don't see it. Can you can you expand your uh, screen, John? So you can see I can see the second side. The, I'm going to try to maximize my screen. You can maximize it. All right, so this will make it easier for us to see something. Hopefully you guys can see this when I maximized it. Number of Okay. Num size of step print. Number of steps to cross the USA. So I'm gonna No, but wait a second, John. Like there are only two print statements. So the first print statement is printing three thousand, and the second st print statement is printing the number of steps, right? Yes. No, no, no. The, the, the second st print statement is printing width of USA in, uh, in feet. So the first, that first statement is not correct. Width of USA is somehow, oh, that should be width. Wait a second. So you have width of USA in feet. Where are you printing that? There, I don't see any print width of USA in feet statement getting printed, but I still see 600, I mean, 6 million there. So that's the number of steps, right? Yes. Uh, 2.5 uh, divided by 500, 200, 201. Yes, correct. That's the number of steps, correct. Okay. So that's printed correctly. Yeah, so that's printed correctly, right? So yeah, just uh, need to do maximize the screen so we can see it. So now, so now we can ask the question, this is the number of steps I need to take. Um, so how many steps can I take in a day, right? So what do I do? I have to compute this. And so again, we need a simple model, right? So first model is assume that you walk all day long, right? So if you walked all day long, how many steps would you take? Uh, I have to make one more assumption. Let me assume that I take one step every second, right? So then this is a number, I could just write it from before. It's the number of seconds in a day, which was like 86,000, we calculated before, but we can as well compute it, right? So there's 60 seconds in, uh, in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day, right? And that's the number of seconds in a day, but it, I'm going to take one step every second. So that's the number of steps I will take in a day. So now the number of days that I need will be just divide the number of steps I need to take divided by the number of steps I take per day, right? And so that gives me a number, which is like 69 days, right? Uh, and then I think that's the answer, right? So the surprising thing is that the number of days is not that large, right? It's, it's only two months in this, in this way of doing it. Of course, it's completely unreasonable to say that you'd walk for 24 hours a day, right? So it may be better, for example, to come back and change this and say, I will only walk for eight hours a day 
and see what happens, right? And that's the skill that I want you guys to uh, further develop, right? You can tweak it, make it reasonable. So now you have 200 days, which is about six months, right? So uh, hopefully that's a good demonstration for you guys to open up a window into asking interesting questions, breaking it down into small steps, writing some Python code to help you with those steps. And once you've done this calculation, you can save it and modify it and tweak it um, to make it more realistic and so on, right? Change the size of your step, change the number of hours in a day. And at the end of it, you have a interesting answer to a fun question, right? So I encourage you guys to get familiar with this tool. Uh, we will use this tool uh, uh, to do uh, a lot more interactive stuff in the upcoming sessions. And we'll also use this tool to write more code and use the code to answer some of the quizzes and so on uh, in the session, right? Uh, I'm gonna pause here and quickly show you um, where the quizzes are located, right? Uh, and also take questions. So the quizzes are, if you go back to the course page, the quizzes are in a separate section uh, under the course page, right? So if you go to session uh, one, section you can see here I just highlight with my mouse section 1.4 is where some of the quizzes are located so if you click on that it's just like the other sessions we other sections we looked at there are tabs in here and if you click on them some of them are interactive so if you click on the first tab uh, I have just asked you a multiple choice question which is really an answer to something we already solved so you can go ahead and get some freely uh, solve this if you remember what the answer was otherwise take a minute to recompute it some of them require you to uh, compute something something new, right? So important thing that I want to tell you guys is there is a little bit more content on the website than I've done in the class. Uh, I want you to just explore it and experience that extra content. And also I want you to work through the problems, uh, make it so the next time I can assume you guys understand variables, you understand print statements, you understand how to use the Python tool and we can start building on this uh, on this on this framework right and the last thing like i said keep up the interest and the excitement of asking interesting questions so go back to the discussion forums post some interesting questions that you might have um and then uh we can discuss them in the discussion forum and so on uh i'm gonna pause now and take questions if you have any questions quickly yeah i'm unmuting everyone uh, i think the only uh, there was there was some issue with the uh, people logging onto the site, uh, I highly recommend that you should try to log in a few days before the lecture. So just to make sure that you have access to all the content and that gives us time to raise the issue with the technical team because we are not, we are more on the content side, not on the platform side. So we'll have to raise it to the technical team. We may not be able to help you with those questions. Uh, so we're definitely going to uh, follow up with the technical team for all the users who are having problem. You can just send us email at support at acats.org, whoever is having technical issues. And um, I think any other question you have for John, uh, please have the question. And again, as John emphasized, the beauty of this platform is that as grown-ups, we always complain that we cannot learn. And a big reason is that you cannot get the same kind of environment or setup we had in the college or university. And the idea of uh, ICATS is to re uh, replicate the similar setup by bringing top tier instructors, high quality course content, and most importantly, bringing all these motivated learners in the uh, interactive and live setup. So you know each other, get to know each other and help each other and have fun and enjoy the course. It's not going to be boring going over the boring text material but interact and figure it out that's how we want to learn okay, I didn't hear you did anyone have a question so John, John quick question so when I run the when I uh, yes uh, run the program it only does the output or the result is only from the print function None of the uh, uh, none of the other functions will uh, produce the results. Uh, none. So yes, only the so this is important, right? So only the output of the print function will will be on the display, and that's the way any program works. So very important point. Thank you for asking the question. 
is in a program you have to deliberately tell the program i need to display something right and today we are using what is called a console display so for example if you're running this program on your computer it will display on the console which we will talk about separately but a console display is a textual output mm. similarly if you had an application and you want to see it in your application you have to write a user interface and you have to tell the program to display it on that user interface right so it's a very explicit and really a rather complicated process behind the print function is a very complicated process because python will actually tell uh, the computer i want to display something the computer will actually call the monitor and eventually something will get written on your screen so the entire process is very deliberate so only what you ask to be printed will get printed does that answer your question uh, yeah. got it yeah, yeah later we'll see how to print uh, right now we're just printing numeric answers right maybe you want to put a comment and you want to put some text in there and so on and in the next session i'll show you how to do that right uh, but for now we're just using it as a basic calculator so i'm just printing out the numbers okay Later, like we can get more rich experiences, and in the next session, I'll show you how to get input back from the user. So you can actually ask a user how large is your step, and then if he puts in a number like two point five, you can use that in your calculation, right? But both the input and the output are deliberate and specific operations that we have to code for, and right? we have to request Python to do it for us. Uh, another question, John. Yes, please. Hi, John. Uh... very good morning i believe it's a good morning time for you i have a very basic question i already posted on the chat box yes. you know i am i am doing lot of the certification through over in internet whether it's yes. a free or it's a paid one i have a very uh, great interest about the big data analytics the data science business yes. analytics yes. but you know what is happening for past few months my interest is going off whenever i'm trying to learn over internet yes. so i believe this this would be a issue with everyone so how yes. to have the focus you know yes yes so, so i'm is, sorry that is not a particular with the with the course but still i'm asking no no so if you can a, it's a very good thing right in in what i would say is something that i want uh, i'm going to just say something there's no perfect answer to this let's Please. continue to discuss this on the discussion forum okay so the first thing when you want to have something you must pay attention to it so you must be mindful of it the first thing we want to do is to monitor your focus and motivation right so for mm -hmm. example if you're getting distracted you have to know what kind of things distract you only then you can have a strategy to avoid it right if you mm -hmm. get if you're losing interest then you should be mindful that i am losing interest right mm -hmm. then we can have a strategy to prevent loss of interest you see what i mean so maybe this is a wonderful topic for the discussion group uh, if you will post it there we can ask yeah. other people how do we do this and i want to say that it's so important right because that is the one thing that prevents you from accomplishing your goal is the loss of motivation and focus and it turns yeah. out that the online video courses one of the problems that can happen uh, of any course is that the content is not easy for you to handle and if Correct. you face too many obstacles you will give up right mm -hmm. so i take a lot of effort and that's why we do live sessions like this to remove the obstacles and keep your interest right i encourage mm -hmm. you to say nothing will happen we'll work with you it's all right you can do it just make sure you put in some time between now and next session and show up for the next session and we can go in small steps and we can get there right but of course yeah. you have to look inwards and see what holds you back as well right mm -hmm. so i think it's really really important to pay attention to uh, that aspect Uh, we at Acads felt that having live interactive sessions will keep your motivation high. Right? Also, also having Fine. peers Thank around. You. Peer, it, it's very important to work with peers. Let's say even if you're trying to learn online, it will be much better to to form a group of three, four people, and then go and uh, three, four guys, and then learn something. It's Project like, work. Like, just like going to the gym. If you're going by yourself, it's, it's you will skip. Okay. But if you're working with buddy, I mean, he will push you. So that helps. Yes, I think that's the yeah. right approach. Yeah, yeah. So post this as a discussion. <clears throat> People can come up with their own strategies how they do this, right? That would be very mm -hmm. useful for all of us to look at each other, and we can just keep. We should keep discussing this all the way through the course. And I want right. to see you guys with the same level of interest and enthusiasm in the last session as the first session, right? <laughs>
Uh, also, I have one more comment. Like one of the philosophy about ICATS is that it's not that we will be teaching; you will be teaching from each other. You'll be, we will be learning as much from you as you'll be learning from us. So make sure that you interact. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yes. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, Manish. No, no, please, please, yes. Uh, and like I said, there are no bad questions. So please, if there are more questions, I love questions. Hi, VJ, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, VJ, um, great class. Thank you very much. It's uh, been a pleasure listening to you. Uh, Manish, thanks so much for organizing. Um, maybe I'm sort of getting ahead of myself, but um, sort of assuming that one can write these programs, it's a very simple program, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to be uh, going through more, more complicated versions of, of things which we might want to accomplish. Yes. I'm just sort of wondering, um, how, how does this translate into, into the real world in the sense, supposing I have an idea and I want to implement it, and I write this program on, well, currently it's just literally on the browser, but I presume that there would be some sort of software application on which this program would eventually be written when we are working independently. Yes. And that would sort of be translated in some way, eventually resulting in some sort of for example, an application of, yes. for example, yes. Excel performing some 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 tasks which I would want to do. Yes. Yes. So, how, how does that sort of that no, process? No. It's a wonderful question. So, let me let me really. I uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the question very much. This was Robin. Uh, so, please introduce yourself uh, in the first few lectures so that people get to know. Sure. And just when asking question, just say one word, uh, one uh, line about yourself. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So we'll get to, sorry. Uh, can Can I have your name again? Yeah, it's uh, Rabindra. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, sort of, uh, calling in from Dubai. I run an investments group here, and an equity investments group, and this is a very interesting topic. At some point or the other, I was hoping that you know maybe I, it would help me in designing, creating strategies, certainly. Yes. Uh, I want my Excel to be a bit better, and certainly going far ahead in the future, perhaps uh, even designing applications. So it's, it's a very interesting start to the yeah. entire thing, which is why I asked this question. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So, Ravin, the wonderful. It's a, it's a great question, and let me, other people will find my, hopefully find the answer and the question interesting is that, the even though I first point is even though you're coding in a browser right now, uh, I can show you specifically and everyone in a quick demo towards the end of the course how we can just extract exactly the same code, save it in a file, and run it outside of the browser as long as you have Python installed locally. You don't even have to change a single line of it, mm -hmm. right? So that will mean. That means that you can deploy it on a server. You can deploy it on other people's machines. There will be no change at all. I only took the route of executing the code in the browser to make your initial adoption easy. But there's absolutely zero conceptual change that you have to do to move this code to make it into a real world application. So does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, uh, makes perfect sense. So, so what I'm gathering is that if I wanted this, uh, this well, the USAP calculation, to work um, on my office computer. I'm, yeah. I'm calling from home right now. So all yeah. I have to do is I'll copy paste this text and yeah. put it into a Python software in my office. So I would have to download a Python software obviously in my that's office. That's it, that's it, that's it. So we'll do, we can do that install and download locally in one of the yeah. office hours sessions, right? For everybody, I can give you a yeah. local version of Python and show you how to install it. We'll do a hackathon kind of thing where we can all install on our machines, right? We just log in and do an install session. But yes, that's the answer. So you'll install, basically you need to install Python locally and then you just copy this into a, a text file, right? Uh, only thing the file has to have a .py extension and you're mm -hmm. done. Okay. Cool. Right? Um, so, yeah. oh, but let me make a couple of more comments. Since you said, uh, Equity Trader and uh, Excel you will find very rapidly that Excel is a uh, Excel is a great tool because it gives you a certain type of uh, visual data programming, which is wonderful. And we can have a long discussion about Excel versus programming. But hopefully as you go along, I will show you that the programs we write here are going to be A, tremendously flexible, B, easy to maintain, C, easy to write, and D, will scale Tremendously, even though Excel now has millions of rows. By the way, I spent a lot of time working with Excel applications too. But you're going to suddenly find that there's so many uh, capabilities of Python that will quickly surpass uh, what Excel can do. Uh, and so 
hopefully you'll be very productive and start writing some trading algorithms and so on. Uh, Manish and I have both financial services background as well. So we are always interested in that stuff when we think about custom courses uh, focused on financial service applications, right? How to write trading strategies, how to evaluate uh, back test portfolios, etc. So uh, as you stay with us, uh, hopefully you will, you will be a motivation for us to develop and deliver some of that uh, advanced content as well. The only Great point stuff. here is, yeah, we got to build it up, <coughs> right? Because we want all these small concepts to be in play. Great uh, stuff, Vijay. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and Ravindra, I will encourage you to start thinking already about how will I use this? For example, you could write a simple, uh, uh, you know, a simple compound interest calculation right away. Right. Mm -hmm. For example. Uh, so you can start translating some of your uh, ideas into Python code that will build up your, uh, your, your, your mastery of Python as a language, right? So many small things that you do as Excel formulas. Now you can start converting them here. Uh, and if you have questions, of course, reach out to me and you know, you can continue to develop that in parallel. Although I haven't, I tried not to make this course purely financial, right? So there'll be lots of general purpose discussions here. Uh, but thank you so much for that question. Uh, and I'll take a couple more if we can, before, before we all rush back to call our mothers. Are there any more questions? Um, so I, I, I really wanted to uh, ask you guys, uh, I ho oh, please stay active on the forums. Please write mail to me. I'm 100% committed. I don't think there's anything uh, significantly important in my life than making all of you successful right now and giving you good experiences. So please use me as a resource. Uh, I'll try until, until I start screaming, saying I've not, not enough time. Uh, please, uh, uh, please reach out. Uh, and I will send an email to follow up after the session is over, right? Uh, but please proactively reach out. And the most important thing, we talked about motivation and so on. Do schedule a little bit of time between now and the next session to um, practice on your own. Um, can I ask if anyone wants to say, uh, was there a consensus on the office hours? Was it, was it possible or we don't know? So, oh, so John, we, ha we, we have posted the office hours on the, uh, okay, yeah. on, on, the, the on the home page. Uh, yeah, can, the I just, can I just show you guys that quickly? So if you go to this tab, unfortunately, it's under this tab called syllabus. I think, uh, I think uh, it's in the home, uh, it's in the home page. Yeah, it's in the announcements. Okay. Oh, the announcements. Go to the announcements. So if you go to the home page, uh, sorry. Yeah, if you go to the home page, you can see. We sent out an email with course logistics in it. And in that email, the information is there. But at the bottom of this announcement here, I'm just highlighting it. Uh, you can read. We've talked about possible uh, times. We've tried to have two uh, sessions, maybe one one which is more comfortable for, for those who are in the US time zone and one which is more comfortable for those in the Indian time zone. Uh, feel free to pick one or both. Uh, and uh, I really look forward to uh, answering more take, this will I'll take time to deal with any problems people have questions you have so please uh, make as many questions as you can and hopefully we'll have a productive session uh, hey John uh, this is Mohit can you hear me yes Mohit hi All right. a quick question first about this note here so this is yes. definitely not the session to cover a new session this is just for answering your questions or anything sure right uh, oh yeah, it's not for new content. Okay. It's for making sure that you can write for those who need a little extra <laughs> either in writing a program or you have some questions that I couldn't answer now because we ran out of time. Okay. Um, it's for that, right? It's really for you to, of course, if you ask me interesting questions, we can have detailed discussion too, right? All, all right. Yeah. I do have a follow-up question to what Ravindra had asked. It's something yes. very similar. So, I mean, I do understand we can copy programs and, you know, um, you know, send uh, the Python files over to another computer and execute it from a software or an IDE. Yes. But I wanted to understand by the end of this course, I do see that we will be able to write basic application yes. or maybe a basic game. Would you yes. be telling us how we can uh, package that into some kind of uh, executable file to be able to run that across machines or? Of course, of course. Okay. So this, I will do that as well. As part of that session, I will talk about packaging. Okay, wonderful. I'm very pleasantly interested, right? Because I'm very pleasantly interested that you guys want to talk about distribution and packaging. And 
it's a, it turns out to be a very important software development question. How do I get the application to my users? Mm -hmm. And Python has a very good answer for it, okay. right? And actually, there are certain platforms. Uh, I would mention two of them right now, which have Python built into it. So the Mac platform already has a Python interpreter built into it. So you, if you're running a Mac machine, mm -hmm. Python's already built in. Same thing with Linux. You have built-in Python running on the OS, right? So you don't even have to deploy the language runtime. Mm -hmm. All you have to deploy is your code. And there's a very neat packaging strategy for the code as well. Wonderful. So by the time we get to ses session six, we can either do it in the session or we can do in office hours and we can talk yeah. about packaging. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, can we have one more question? Okay, if not question, comment. Did you guys did you guys find the session interesting? Was it hopefully the next session will be more interactive, but did you like the interactive elements that you can actually write code and we can discuss it together? I think John, we can put it as a discussion and then they can write it together because otherwise all of them answering will be difficult. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a good. Uh, that's a good suggestion for Manish. So maybe this is a good moment to wind up. I really want to uh, encourage you guys to stay active and stay motivated. Maybe you can even, like I, like I said earlier, uh, uh, to monitor your motivation and focus. Right. So please keep a note and uh, write down, write down how you feel today and next week. Track your motivation. I love the comments coming in. I'm reading them now. So. Uh, again, thank you guys very much. Please make it a point to contact your mothers and tell all of them how much you appreciate everything they've done for you. And for those of you who are moms, happy Mother's Day. Thank you, John. It was a great session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys.